so much for being a survivor. With great powers come great movies, most of the time. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 comic book movie franchises. This is Sparta! For this list, we're looking at series of films based on comic book franchises. They have to be a series of movies, so Watchmen and Daredevil, which are only one movie, won't be considered for this list. Not that Daredevil would have made it anyway. Bullseye. <laughs> Number 10, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Gnarly! Radical! Yeah! <laughs> They're the heroes in a half shell. Turtle power! Arguably the most fun characters to have gone from the pages of the comic book to the silver screen. The turtles throw out 90 slang, eat pizza, and kick chow in equal measure. <laughs> Turning a gritty black and white comic series into family friendly entertainment may sound like a recipe for failure, but children of the 80s know how delightful these tales became. This guy knows where Splinter is! The third film and recent reboot may have missed the mark for many, but we haven't forgotten our original love for the turtles. Number nine, Men in Black. Your boy Captain America over here. <laughs> the best of the best of the best, sir. <laughs> yeah, with honors. <laughs> Yeah, you know, he's just really excited and he has no clue why we're here. <laughs> we assure you non-believers that the Men in Black films were inspired by a comic book series. The bleak world of intergalactic cops that murder witnesses and police the entire universe instead became one of appealing actors, unique aliens, and entertaining stories. You know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. A horrifying creature like Vincent D'Onofrio's Edgar is used for comedic fodder, and many of the aliens, like Tony Shalhoub's Jack Jeeves, are downright lovable in this sci-fi comedy series. Get an idea how much that stings? Show us the merchandise, you're gonna lose another head, Jeeves. Set to cross over with the 21 Jump Street series of films, if the leaked emails are to be believed. We can't wait to see more. Series 4, de-atomizer. That's what I'm talking about. Noisy cricket. Number 8, The Batman Quadrilogy. Meow. We're just gonna come out and say it. If it weren't for the fourth awful film in the Batman series, Batman and Robin, this franchise would have found itself much higher on the list. Introducing the uninitiated to a much more adult Gotham City, impressive performances by the likes of Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Danny DeVito, among many others. These films all became instant classics, except of course, Batman and Robin. Forget the geriatric bat, come join me. With the first two films embracing the new, edgier Batman comic stories, and the third giving us a so-so film with great visuals and fantastic performances by Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones, it's hard to understand how the fourth film could screw things up so badly. Did we mention that we hate Batman and Robin? Talk about your cold shoulder. Number seven, Superman. Easy, miss. I've got you. You, you've got me. Who's got you? A man who could easily conquer, but chooses to protect and nurture. Superman is an entirely admirable character, no matter how dark his new films try to make him. Be their angel, be their monument, be anything they need you to be, or be none of it. You don't owe this world a thing. Christopher Reeves' Superman got pretty goofy by the end, but he took the role very seriously, and his stalwart portrayal epitomized years of comic book mythos to perfection. On the whole, I'd say it's been swell. Swell? Yeah. You know, Clark, um, there are very few people left in the world who feel comfortable saying that word. No matter how much a film like Superman Returns and its real estate scheme may have missed the mark, Soup's visage hasn't been fully tarnished, and it may in fact go to another level when he battles the bat in 2016. God versus man. Day versus night. The red capes are coming. Number six, Hellboy. The spawn of a demon summoned to Earth as an infant by the Nazis, Hellboy is the epitome of an unlikely hero, due in large part to the sensitive side that he hides beneath the badass. The Hellboy films may not have been box office behemoths, but they did manage to capture the comic series' tone and spirit down to a T. It also helps that Ron Perlman was basically born to play Hellboy. Stop he it! Right now. Oh, what? Are you threatening me? Because I think I can take you. 
Excuse me? With an oft-discussed third installment possibly on the horizon, Hellboy fans are salivating at the prospect of a conclusion to the series, and we all agree that it needs to happen. <laughs> Number 5. Blade <laughs> From the insanely awesome opening bloodbath scene in the first film, Blade's potential as a film franchise was clear, even if the character's origin in comics was unknown to many. Changing the comic version of Blade from relying heavily on his intellect to a warrior who practically snarls every line of dialogue forever altered the character, a change that would ripple out onto the pages of the comic books themselves. That biscuit boy is a UV lamp. We're gonna play a little game of 20 questions, and depending on how you answer. You may walk out of here with a tan. Snipes is open to returning to the role and has reportedly met with Marvel about the possibility, so we'd love to see him take part in either the Civil or Infinity War. <laughs> Number 4. Sam Raimi's Spider Man. With great power comes great responsibility. Arguably Marvel's most recognizable figure. J. Jonah Jameson seems to be the only person who can't get behind Spider-Man. Spider-Man wasn't attacking the city, he was trying to save it. That's slander. It is not. I resent that. Slander is spoken. In print, it's libel. But when audiences got their first view of the web-slinger, they were sold. The first film got the goblin right and seemingly ripped Spidey's origins straight from the comic book pages. Thanks! The second film is action-packed and considered by many to be one of the best superhero films of all time. The third film included emo Peter Parker and possibly ruined Venom forever, but it still couldn't erase the previous film's grandeur. We can't wait to see the webcrawler's next reboot and introduction to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Number 3. X-Men A band of mutants who fight for a world that hates them, Brian Singer seemed to tap into that internal conflict and feel of the comics and translated it perfectly to the silver screen. Your bike needs gas. And fill her up. Split across different timelines and with multiple characters cast as different actors, it's amazing how well it all manages to stay together. So what's in it for me? You, you kleptomaniac, get to break into the Pentagon. With Singer's triumphant return to the franchise with 2014's Days of Future Past and two more X-Men movies set to release in 2016, this franchise just keeps getting better. Remember, X-Men 3 never happened. Gene. Hey, Logan. Gene. Are you okay? You're here. Where else would I be? Number 2. The Dark Knight Trilogy What the hell is that? Making millions and receiving critical acclaim, Batman Begins brought Batman out of the shadows and back onto the big screen. However, it wasn't until the brilliant follow-up, The Dark Knight, that the series became truly respected and is the only comic book inspired film to win a non-technical Oscar. You wanna know how I got these scars? The series is dark but not dejected, true to the source material without being campy, and smart without being too pretentious. Nolan's vision of Batman combined everything he knew about filmmaking with the more complex Batman stories, giving us a series that truly does the caped crusader justice. Impossible. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number 1. Marvel Cinematic Universe You listen well, brother. I'm listening. When Iron Man's post credit sequence first mentioned the Avenger Initiative, comic book fans were probably more excited than they've ever been before. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. 
Luckily for the film goer, and for Marvel, the idea of a massive, unified movie universe was not only a brilliant idea, but it turned out better than anyone could have ever anticipated. The following standalone films for Hulk, Thor, and Captain America managed to please audiences and do the characters justice, while Whedon's super-hyped Avengers film managed to bring it all together perfectly. <laughs> Next, taking us to outer space with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and now to the tiny world of Ant-Man, there's no wonder why the MCU is the highest grossing film franchise of all time. Do you agree with our list? I hate those comic books. What's your favorite comic book movie franchise? I am Iron Man. For more inspired top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. That's the first thing you said that wasn't batshit crazy!